Hi, it's Steph. Welcome back to my garden. So tonight I'm going to work on getting together my containers for summer. So the first ones I'm going to start with are these two uh, window boxes on my shed, as well as the two pots that I have on the patio in front of the shed. Um, I'm going to use a combination of annuals that I bought, which weren't many, and annuals that I grew from seed. Now I try to grow some things from seed every year and I figure that I can just use those in the window boxes and in the containers and it's a great way to save money. I've already bought the seeds, I already had the potting soil, so it was just a matter of you know, using a little bit of my time to grow those and I think that they will look really pretty in the containers. Um, I did buy a couple of small uh, annual pots to kind of supplement the window boxes. I bought some Mandevilla. I really like Mandevilla because it's similar to a petunia in shape, but because they're tropical, they can take a little bit of dry weather so if I forget to water them for a day or two they'll be okay um, at least in my experience and also I find that they're very long blooming they don't get very straggly um, and don't require much cutting back or deadheading so I really enjoy them as an annual so I did pick up about four of those they were $5.98 a piece at Home Depot so in all I spent about $24 you know plus tax on a few annuals and the only other thing that I've bought for the season so far that is considered an annual is that large Boston fern hanger that I divided among four containers um, and if you didn't see that video I can link it here but that's what I'm gonna do this evening so come along with me see what I choose to include in these containers and we'll get them planted Okay, so here is my Steph's home nursery that keeps growing. Well, actually it hasn't grown in a, a few days, so that's actually a good thing. We're going in the right direction, but these have to get in the ground. But here is the Mandevilla that I bought. I went with white this year. I usually do pink. So white will be a little bit of a change, which I think will be cool because it'll um, match well with the other annuals that I'm gonna plant in there. So let's get those over there and I'm gonna show you the annuals um, that I grew from seed too. Okay, so I have some gomfrina. This is the atomic purple gomfrina that I got from the seeds from Baker Creek. So I have a few of those that I'm gonna use in my containers. I also have some verbena. These are the seedlings that are still growing. So I have some verbena right here. And so I'm deciding whether or not I wanna go with just the gomfrina with the mandevilla and some melissum in the front or if I wanna throw one of these in the middle. But I think I'm just gonna go with the gomfrina and the um, alyssum. So I'm gonna go, yep, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put the mandevilla in the middle. I'm gonna grab some of this gomfrina and some alyssum. Where is the alyssum? Here it is. So this one's the royal carpet. And then I have a pastel mix somewhere right here. So these are the pastel mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the um, I think the royal, the royal carpet, the purple. Actually, no, I'm gonna go with the pastel mix because I think the pastel mix is gonna have some white in it as well. So even if it doesn't, it'll have pastel colors, it'll pick up on the purple from the gomfrina as well as the white from the mandevilla. A friend of mine gave me this container of Creeping Jenny from her garden. I'm going to split it among these two taller planters and have it draping down the front. So here's how the window boxes turned out. I have some gomfrina. So here in the corners, these two seedlings here. So 
that's gomfrina gomfrina there and one in the corner there all along the front i've put these tiny seedlings of the pastel mix um alyssum that's what it is alyssum and then in the front um in these two spots here the larger plant is the annual that i bought at home depot and that is white mandevilla so i put the one that had less buds or didn't have as many blooms on this side because the right side window box gets more sun than the left side the left is getting shaded by the um, magnolia tree in the corner so that one, I put the one that was a little bit more advanced on that side because that I often have to swap the window boxes, but I did the exact same thing on that side. So same here, we did the gomfrina in the corner, in the center, on the end. Um, there's four gomfrina in each, just that there's an itty bitty one in the back there. So hopefully it catches up. This is a sunnier corner. That side gets less sun and um, the two mandevilla and then alyssum across the front and so the goal is for the alyssum to kind of billow out and fill out the front border of the window box and then the gomfrina will be the tall flower with the little purple palms the little round bloom and then the white mandevilla so it will take a couple of weeks for these to fill out but with the heat and the sun and regular watering they will fill out in no time and i literally spent 12 dollars on two annuals and the cost of a few seeds so not bad here's what i did with my tall planters i used some of the creeping jenny as my spiller in the front and I have three Cosmos planted in each one. Now these will fill out and fill this whole container. This is a petite or a short stature type Cosmo. It only gets 18 to 24 inches and it's a white bloom. I'll show you the packet. I believe it's called um, something princess. And I have already pinched the Cosmos. So what that means is once you have a little bit of growth if you're familiar with pinching dahlias it's essentially the same so initially this seedling had one stem coming up the center when that was full enough I pinched it as in essence breaking this and what that does is it shoots out these two side shoots and so now instead of one skinny shoot up the center I have two bushier shoots out the sides so that's the goal of the pinching is to get a bushier plant with in essence more blooms because the more stalks you have the more blooms you'll get that one in the back is a little bit smaller but I also pinched it recently so it should fill out soon and yeah I know that mo in most cases it's most satisfying to see these containers you know like initially when you fill them out already full but you know if you're gonna try to save money on these annuals if you have a lot of containers to make this is going to be your best bet. Start some things from seed, maybe just pick up a couple of things to supplement the container and exercise a little bit of patience. It's hard. Even for me, it's really hard. I want to see these things overflowing with petunias and bright blooms and whatnot already. But because I rather spend money on perennials, this is what I have to do and it'll be fine. And by 4th of July, these things will look gorgeous. Here are the pots that I did back uh, a few weeks back, my spring porch pots. The lamium is doing great on this side. The other side gets a little more sun, so it kind of crisped up and I had to take it out. But now I have a transplant to put in another space as a ground cover. I just cut back the first flush of the candy tuft. So that is going to already start. I can see here where I cut. It's already starting to push out new growth on the sides and the pincushion flower is all bloomed out and keeps producing new blooms look at all these new blooms getting ready to come up this is such a long lasting perennial and i'm pretty sure i'll be able to keep this here all summer i'm going to just deadhead all of these spent blooms and once in a while throw it some fertilizer and i think it'll keep going and here are the pansies also looking beautiful
These are the Cosmos that I started for these containers that I potted up tonight. They're called Little Princess by Burpee. And the specs on these are, it says that they're large three to four inch single white flowers and they're 18 to 24 inches high. So I planted between three and four of these in each of my containers. And my containers are about 12 inches. I believe they're about a 12 inch container. So if it ends up being too crowded, I can always pull one, but just to make sure that they mostly do well, it's always good to have like an extra. So this is the variety in case anyone is curious. And because I've grown Cosmos before, and I know that sometimes they kind of peter out towards the end of the summer with the heat, um, I started some of these Kalimanjaro white marigolds. They're like a buttery yellow, creamy white, fluffy, really pretty marigold. And so I started some seeds about a week ago and they've already started to germinate. And so my plan is to have a few of these potted up um, as a backup to when the when and if the cosmos don't do well, I have these to put in their place and marigolds usually bloom until a hard frost. So this will be a really nice transition into fall. And because I don't think I'll be able to do another garden tour before these beauties disappear, here is my whale's tail iris looking gorgeous tonight it's such a pretty it almost looks blue in person that bluish color light purple with a dark purple fall really beautiful and these iris just haven't stopped for over a week now i believe these are called first pick And this beauty is called Cantina, and it's all sorts of iridescent purple. Really, really beautiful. Well, here's how my pots turned out. Super impressive, right? Not yet, but they will be. So here's what I put in them. And this one here, I have four of those white Cosmos. Correction on the Cosmo color. I actually thought about it a little bit and the fact that I have white columns here I don't think I would have liked the white Cosmos as much. So instead I went with this variety called Cosmos Daydream And so now I have the three Cosmo Daydream. I did sow an extra seed in there in case something happens to one of those with the yellow creeping Jenny and I think that's going to look lovely and will pop better from the street against the white columns having that combination of pink Cosmo versus the white and in the front here is my spiller I have some of that creeping Jenny that my friend shared with me yes I do know that these are invasive which is why I tend to just stick them in pots um, and they look really pretty against my dark container so I really enjoy it there and I did the same thing on this side and then on the smaller container that I have here in this grouping, I have some Asian Garden Celosia. So this one was really happy and grew really fast, but all the other ones are kind of small. These sprouted a little bit later. It was kind of like hidden under this one. So I have two in these containers because these can get pretty big. So I have two here. And then along the front, I planted some alyssum. So that will kind of billow out over the edge of this container with the um, celosia in the middle. And then I'm going to hope to keep this scabiosa going and the candy tuft should flush out another time. So then I'll have the white with the purple, this little hit of yellow here, hint of yellow, and then I'll have the pink celosia with the pastel colored um, alyssum, which I think it's probably mostly going to be white from some of the reviews I read on the pack of seeds. And then here I'll have the white, the daydream cosmos with the yellow creeping Jenny. So I think these will coordinate really nicely. Those pansies will have to come out at some point. By the time the July heat rolls around, they'll quit. And here I have the same thing. So the celosia on this side is a little smaller, so I put it on the side that gets more sun. I do have to rotate these containers periodically so that they get pretty even sun. So here I have one, two, three of the celosia. One of them may not make it, 
the goal is to end up with at least two. And then again, some alyssum along the front. So I hope to give you guys an update in a few weeks once these have had a chance to fill out and begin blooming. Well, that's it for tonight's containers. I was able to get the front porch pots done, the shed window boxes, as well as these containers on the shed patio. So next time I will work on getting my patio containers done. I have about six containers to do there, but I'm running out of daylight and running out of energy. So that will have to be for another night. Thanks for hanging out and I'll catch you in the next one.